Welcome to the show that looks behind the scenes of the videos we produce here at Eagle Vision. Join us as we break down, dissect, and discuss our process to find out just what it took. Today's video is something special. This video was uh, the brainchild of uh, Jesse McCallum who came up with the concept for it and this whole plan to surprise our boss with sort of a milestone gift. I was just bestowed a custom made knife specifically with me in mind and it is, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to describe it, it's amazing. It's, it's really well done. And to do that, uh, we made this video and sort of partnered with JD Knives. So here's the video that we made for them, uh, followed by me and two Jessies uh, talking about it. There are those born to forge new pathways, who rise to meet the challenges with the persistence of a master. Those who live by the blade and die, preferably of old age, choosing only the finest materials to craft our knives bridging old techniques and evolving the process. If you must see the true definition of sharp and feel the true durability of steel, all you have to do is ask with the right tool in the right hand. Anything is possible. Now that's what I call sharp. JD Knives and Custom Work we're back here that was uh the jd knives uh commercial we made and i'm here with uh jesse below me uh who is the star of this video and uh, the owner of jd knives good to see you thank you for being on the show um, thank you for having me why don't you uh, introduce us to yourself and your craft here really quick uh so my name is jesse lambert i uh, am the owner and operator of jd knives um and we essentially just we build knives, custom knives here. I, I have a job doing uh, what it is I love to do. I'm like a big kid with the tools to do those, uh, those imagination, uh, the uh, creations of the imagination now. So that's me. That's awesome. Yeah, and you do beautiful work. Um, I'm also here with another Jesse who's just above me. Um, Jesse, uh, why don't you, uh, you've been on here before, but why don't you uh, quickly say hi again? Um, yeah, I'm Jesse McCollum for those of you who don't know me. Um, I work at Eagle Vision Video Productions and I'm a camera person, editor, director extraordinaire. extraordinaire. There I say. Um, and yeah, that's, that's me. Awesome. All right. And we're here talking about uh, the commercial. Why don't you, uh, Jesse, why don't you tell us the story of like where this idea came from and, uh, and how did, uh, what was like sort of the, the deal that was struck here? Having worked back at Eagle Vision for um, a few months uh, and seeing uh, all the great work that Ben was doing with all his new staff, uh, we all got together and decided that it would be a great idea to show our appreciation to Ben since he's such a giving individual um, and a very generous boss. So we said, hey, let's, let's figure something out. And I'd done a video with uh, Jesse Lambert at the bottom there uh, when I was uh, just after I split off from Eagle Vision made a, a knife video for him. And so I went, heck, this guy makes really wicked knives. We're better filmmakers than we used to be. Let's make him an updated video and see if he wants to trade services for services. So uh, contacted Jesse and he was all for it. Yeah, this was kind of like a covert production. Um, we were a bit under the radar because we had to make this whole thing sort of on the weekends and in between hours so that Ben didn't know it was happening. And he, he never caught on that it was happening, uh, which is great. Um, so yeah, so <clears throat> we should, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that part later, but why don't we start running through the production here? We talk about sort of what it took to make each part here. Jesse, why don't you take us through, where did the idea for doing the Morgan Freeman type voice come from and how did you find the guy? Um, yeah, well, the Morgan Freeman idea came from, we were sitting down with Jesse and uh, Jesse Lambert and of course he has, you know, a hundred ideas for what he wants to do with knife videos. And he happened to mention that he's like, I know how to do a Morgan Freeman impersonation. And I was like, oh, that sounds fantastic. Like, yeah, like, you know, you practice up your Morgan Freeman. We'll write, you know, we'll basically make like a MasterCard commercial, but for selling knives. Um, and if I may, if I may interrupt, 
Yeah. Uh, when I mentioned that I could do a Morgan Freeman uh, impression, I was definitely confident about it. <laughs> and in fact, I, I don't remember, how, you know, just kind of mentioning. And I said, you guys should hear my Morgan Freeman <laughs> impression. So, and I think, you know, back to you there, Jesse, on that. I was doing the scratch track for the, um, for the commercial, just so I had a pace to edit to. And um, being a little bit of a perfectionist myself, I was like, you know, I'm going to take a crack at this Morgan Freeman impression. So I started Googling how to do a Morgan Freeman imp impersonation. And it turns out there's a ton of videos online by a guy named, um, oh, what the heck is his name? It's Charlie, Charlie Hopkinson. Yes. Charlie Hopkinson. And, uh, and there's nobody better than him. So anyway, so I was, I was learning from him to do the, the scratch track, laid it down myself and was like, this doesn't sound too bad. And then I was like, okay, Jesse, here's the scratch track. Here's the script. It's your turn to do it. And then he did it and sent back the, his results. And I was like, listen to the Morgan Freeman voice. And I was like, we both sound nothing like this guy. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> so then I did a little yeah. bit of research trying to figure out how to solve this issue. And it turns out that Charlie Hopkinson has a Fiverr account and he will do Morgan Freeman impersonations for like 200 bucks for a hundred words. So I was like, great. Time to revisit the script, knock it down to a hundred words, and uh, and then send them two hundred bucks and see what happens. So that's that's what we did. We hired Charlie Hopkinson, the best Morgan Freeman impersonator, for dirt cheap. It was amazing. That's awesome, oh, man. And he he nailed it out of the park too. Yeah, like. yeah. Let's walk through uh, some of the shots here. So here, you're what what are we looking at here, uh, Jesse? What what tools are you using? What is this? A uh, portal to hell that you own in your <laughs> garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, so this is um, uh, the forge, and what you're seeing me is is just tongs. They're about they're about twenty inches long, just to keep my hands out of the fire. So they're pretty essential um, uh, part of uh, you know bladesmithing, blacksmithing, um, and that forge just for a little bit of information. That forge gets up to about three thousand degrees, so past the melting point of steel. Cool. And um, if I leave that steel in there for too long, it will turn into uh, a puddle. And uh, you open that door, and and out comes all the iron as soon as the oxygen hits it. So it's it's quite a fireworks display. But um, oh, wow. yeah, what you're what you're looking at there is about three thousand degrees. Crazy. And this shot, I'll stick on this one for a second because this sort of shows the master shot for where all the lights are and that kind of thing. Um, I was a cinematographer on about half of the shoot, and uh, this was one of the days that I was on it with Jesse. And uh, I basically did what I have right here. <laughs> it's like exactly what we did. I bounced my uh, uh, Aperture 120D off of the wall and turned it way down. That's where you're getting that... Uh, little spotlight behind him the light is up to his uh, his right our left and then this light that it's above me is right above him and it's just a an aperture amram panel with a gel on it just trying to enhance that mordor like look of uh of the forge and then uh there's little there's a little bit of work being done off camera with i think we ended up using a flashlight for this part where when yeah. he strikes the metal um, Jesse would spark a little flashlight in his face. I don't know if it hits him in this shot or at the neck. It's this one. There you go. Yeah. So that's just that like, like a flashlight time. hitting them. Yeah. We took a little bit extra time in this room to try and make this look great. But even in the grade, I just enhanced it a little bit. I, uh, I made the, the whiter light a little more like turquoise blue, um, increased the saturation a bit. And you can't tell um by just looking at a frame but this area right here in the forge i did like a little bit of a bloomy effect to make it look like it was glowing hot and sort of providing this uh the light that we see in this room and i had i remember i just this came out right when the last not the last jedi the last star wars movie the rise of skywalker rise of skywalker um yeah, when that movie came out, um, I'd just seen it, and so I was really mimicking some of the look, that sort of J.J. Uh, Abrams cinematographer's look and grade on some of this. So I was kind of referencing it. Talk to us about this shot. This uh, we were going for a real sciencey look here. What's happening? What are you dipping it into? What's <clears throat> what chemically is happening? What are we looking at? Um, so this isn't something typical you would see in a blacksmith shop. 
um, or a bladesmithing for, for quenching, but it is really cool. And just for me to be able to watch this slow it down. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, super cool. And this oh, one, yeah. you can see this one, it doesn't do as quite as good a job. But you, this one, nonetheless, you can see how it cools from the outside coming in. For sure, yeah. You can see the dark edges around it. And and that that to me is super cool to watch because I actually in the in the quenching oil and the stuff where I can't see that, I do see it when I'm grinding it later because it oh. actually has an effect on the steel itself. Wow. Very cool. Yeah, so so you can actually see uh, hardening lines and how mm -hmm. something hardens. And those bubbles actually are our nightmares. We don't like those bubbles. Oh, okay. <laughs> So in a steel container, we would shake it really hard mm -hmm. to break that vapor barrier um, so that those bubbles, because every time that bubble, air is, air is extremely insulating, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't want insulation when it comes to quenching. We want it to cool down as fast as possible. So when, when we quench in a quench tank, we would um, vigorously shake it to break those bubbles. But yeah, cool. a little bit behind the scenes on that one. This one uh, was a fun little quick challenge to light. We left some of the practical lights on that you have and turned some of them off. Um, but we put up a big four by um, piece of diffusion just above this spot where you walk into and then raised, uh, I think mm -hmm. the 300 D up as high as we could and just like pointed it back down to give that like super soft um, diffused uh, top light. I remember thinking this sort of looked like one of those dioramas in a museum. And I like I, in this shot, it looks like you have like a, like a bunch of specimens here. So I, I like the idea of it looking a little like you're walking into your own natural history museum. And you did have mm -hmm. a piece of mastodon um, bone right there, which is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely like pulling a, a couple of those vibes out and it just sort of centered the shot because you can see like the, the light right above you sort of like naturally vignettes this in a bit. There's chaos up front in the foreground, but yet there's order in the background with mm -hmm. files being hung up and the drills being hung up. I just want to say right now, my shop never looks like that. It's, yeah. <laughs> you cleaned up just all, for us. Yeah. It's all chaos, but yeah. uh, no, uh, with the order in the background in out of focus and with the chaos in focus, I think it's just such a cool dynamic. And uh, whether you guys meant to do that or not, I mean, wow. But that's that's one of the that's one of the things that just catches my my attention it says a lot really fast about what we're what we're doing what we're looking at and if mm -hmm. people don't uh register that right away the next shot is you uh grabbing your selection here and this is i don't think we changed the lighting too much for this this is the same sort of top top lighting thing I think for this shot, for a bunch of these shots, I did just little uh, digital zooms on them to sort yeah. of uh, yeah, just give that forward them. momentum. Uh, I think this one is an actual dolly, though. You did yeah, this, this one's one. on a dolly. I, I came in and did this one on my own, I believe. This is my first day shooting, one of the few shots that was actually usable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before David came in, I was like, we need to redo this shot and this shot and this shot. Um, and, and thank goodness he did. But yeah, it's just lit with the practical, and I believe uh, I had one panel light with uh, mm -hmm. an umbrella on it, kind of kicking up. Yep. Uh, and then uh, the shot there with his hand, that's all practical lighting. It just lit from the sparks coming off of the uh, belt grinder. And then all this, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it definitely, this was all like the jungle stuff from uh, The Rise of Skywalker. I was really, I'd yep. just seen the movie, and I was like, I'm going to try and emulate that look in this. And I feel like it just makes some of those darker areas a little bit feel like there's some color there and yep. a little bit of a little bit of magic under the surface, a little juicier. Reverse Oreo cookie shot here. That's Remember right. That. And this one, I think, I think this was just lit with maybe two lights. Well, three, including the one you see in the frame. <clears throat> uh, I'm pretty sure we had a, a light above that, um, just projecting down. Uh, yeah, we did. Up. Uh, that area it was like up and over on one of these uh, C stands. C yeah. stands that I got right here, um, and then the other one I think was just on a stand to his like right behind him, just making yeah, it look like that window open. light was uh, was hitting him and, and sort of defining where he was in the space. And, and to go back on on the um, your love of the leather, Jesse is uh, that video you did for me a while back is. Yeah. Uh, 
one of my favorite parts of that was uh, the way you captured the leather work. It, throughout this whole video, you can see um, your love for each aspect of it. it whether, whether or not it's, it's part of my craft or part of your craft, it kind of all melds together. And, and um, I, I can appreciate that about, about your craft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, so yeah I guess, uh, we didn't do a ton of shot listing for the um, for this video. We uh, I had a, a loose idea of what I wanted in my head based mm -hmm. off what I'd seen Jesse work on in the past. And then we just kind of showed up on the day and was like, well, what do you got going on today, Jesse? What's interesting today? And, and coming so we, from the perspective uh, that I'm coming from, like you guys are you, you guys are talking a lot about the production parts of things, you know what I mean? And, and coming from the perspective of me, like I – I have enough knowledge of, of an art to, to recognize art, but at the same time, because TV is so prolific and it's part of our everyday lives now and video mm -hmm. production and all that, it's, we take so much of it for granted, right? And you guys come in and I get to see the artistry of your craft, you know what I mean? And I can recognize the artistry because of what I do, but yet it takes that, uh, that world that I take for granted and it, it transfers it over into that art. And, uh, and you guys definitely did a good job of, of showing me the artistic side of what you guys do. No, oh, thanks. Yeah, we're hoping we didn't annoy you too much with our long setup times and whatnot. But <laughs> half an hour to set up a shot, what the heck? Yeah. And then you look at it and yeah. you're like, oh, wow, that's, that's special. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and, then, and then the commercial comes out and it's half a second blip, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, it is interesting with this one. We, we didn't shot list like we maybe normally would. It was more just... Um, getting little bits of your process and getting a camera in there and trying to figure out how to make that look photographic and dramatic. And uh, it was a cool, like, whittling down of footage, which maybe normally we would, uh, we would have, like, our shots that we, we wanted to shoot, shoot them, put them together. We already know how that edit's going to go. But in this one, it was, like, finding a sequence and a flow of the shots where you don't feel like you're drastically taken off course and you're going from, like, if we started maybe with the leather making, that felt like it didn't work ending with that made the most sense because this is the like sheath that the knife's going to go into and you have that big logo stamp and that really i think uh sells it at the end here too so this part we did a little dolly in here and i i graded this one with a heavy vignette actually just to make sure that the bottom felt darker than the top to really try and add even more because it, it was such a macro shot we didn't spend a lot of time <clears throat> on the details here with the lighting yeah. um there wasn't too much we could do light that we saw in the previous shot as well so it yeah. works for now this shot i had uh i did on my first day <laughs> and uh and it was terrible you remember dave <laughs> everything was nice and evenly lit and uh oh, I had yeah. to come back and uh, and reshoot this one on my own and i just had two um uh two two panel lights with umbrellas on it and I just put them right beside Jesse's face, just out of frame uh, to light them. The other one was in mm -hmm. front just to get a little bit of eye light, but we definitely wanted it to fall in the shadow and be very, yeah, very dramatic. Um, For sure. But yeah, I think yeah. I, I came back specifically just to get these shots one day. It took about an hour yeah. or 40 minutes. And it worked out really well. Yeah. Was it a challenge to line up his voice with the uh, Morgan Freeman impersonator? Um, no, not really. Um, because we had the scratch track and I basically, I did the scratch track to, uh, Jesse's performance here. Uh, and then I gave the Morgan Freeman impersonator that scratch track. And I said, make sure that, you know, your lines match up exactly with the lines that I've given you here. Cause they're the only ones that have to sync with lips and mm -hmm. he nailed it. He had the yeah. pacing down everything. So it, it was very easy actually. Sweet. Um, yeah. And then the next part here, I used a little bit of the sparks that you had from shooting the product shot and I just sort of did an overlay just so it sort of tied these two frames together. It's just a, it's only like four frames where you see the sparks, but it just sort of brings you to this shot in a bit of a transitionary way. And why don't you tell us about this? What, how did you achieve this shot? <laughs> and who set it up? It was Leanne that set it up. Is that right? Yeah, it was, yeah. We had Leanne set it up, and I said, you know, basically stage it like you were going to take a photograph of it. Um, Leanne is our uh, photographer at Eagle Vision, and this was part of her contribution to the project. Um, and so, yeah, we had Jesse bring in some of his um, display rocks from his um, from his shop. We put them on top of a piece of glass, uh, and then we rotated that glass on the table. And um, 
yeah, and had Jesse um, grinding, was it magnesium? I think it was a magnesium uh, type. Tit uh, titanium. Titanium, that was it, yeah. Just above, uh, just above the product. You have the knife there, right? The, yes. the blade in question. This is, uh, this is the one we had made for Ben. And uh, can you walk us through this, uh, this knife a little bit, uh, Jesse? Yeah, so um, really the fundamental direction for this knife was a conversation that uh, all three of us had. And we kind of just tried to nail down some of uh, Ben's personalities. Um, does he drive a truck with leather seats kind of thing? Um, but one of the key questions was, uh, is he a fan of Superman or Batman? And uh, you guys answered Batman pretty quickly. So uh, we gave it a dark, uh, functional, uh, but yet uh, still fashionable uh, look and feel to it. So the sa it's a Sanmai construction. You'll actually see a line in the blade just before the cutting edge. So that's actually a lamination of two different steels. Mm. And uh, what that does is it provides a soft jacket on the outside to give some flex and toughness and a really hard edge on the inside to uh, have that functionality. And again, that's the function meeting the fashion part of it, but all of it is done under a veil of, uh, of a dark look and feel uh, with the Turkish walnut as well. It's a very dark wood. Um, everything below that is either blued steel or, or um, uh, Damascus, which have been etched and uh, blued as well. So everything from the tip down to, to the uh, pommel nut has all been done under that, uh, that direction. And then that was a surprise for Ben. And then unbeknownst to me, there was also another knife being made. Uh, that, uh, I, uh, you guys gave me at my going away party when I moved here to Hamilton. Which is still in Fort St. John. So yes. <laughs> couldn't take it on the plane with you. But it's good we have them both here for the, uh, the comparison here. But this was the other knife that was created. Um, and it's, I, I just love it. It looks, uh, it looks deadly and beautiful all in one go. And I love it's, uh, sort of lighter, like caramel vanilla look. And, uh, on the hilt, um, if you look on the back of it there, uh, there's a little piece of that Mastodon tusk inlaid into it, which is just my favorite thing. I like the bolt too. Twins. Now I'm, now I'm knife bros with Ben. You, you guys are connected for life. You That's, know? Right. That's right. We need to kill something together with them. <laughs> we just be released in the woods with nothing but these knives. <laughs> yeah, we do a Survivor Man episode. Yeah. Um, what was the response to this video like um, on uh, on your end, Jesse? Was uh, what what kind of uh, feedback did you get from your customers or the community after we released this? So I actually had uh, I, I count them on all one hand, but I mean just one is saying something. I had a couple people actually see me in public and go, "Now that's what I call sharp," you know. <laughs> nice. And for me, for me, that's kind of cool. You know, the tagline at the end of the commercial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but oh yeah, no, I had people calling me up, um, you know, with with other other business in mind. But at the end of that conversation was, "Hey, I loved your commercial." you know, or, or nice. who'd you get uh, you to do that or something in context with the commercial itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, the, the response was um, surprisingly overwhelming for uh, what I expected anyways. And um, yeah, no, I love it myself. My daughter, she gets me to play it over and over and over <laughs> again. She's two years old. One of the scenes in the commercials is, is now my cover photo for my Facebook uh, page. And uh, so whenever my Facebook page is open, she'll see that and she'll go sharp. You know, she's two years old. She goes, daddy sharp. And uh, she, she wants me to play the video again for her. So that's probably my best, my best response. <laughs> and probably my most favorite too is my two year old daughter. Who's just a, a super fan. of That's awesome. Commercial. Yeah. And it was, it was a fun thing to sort of be a part of making. Yeah. It was a lot, a lot of fun. Cause yeah, Ben had no idea that we were making this film and, uh, or this commercial. And then we, um, yeah, we, we cornered him, showed him the, the video, and then had him turn around, and boom, there's the knife. Mm -hmm. uh, well, guys, I think that's it. Thanks for sharing some of your business with us. Uh, Jesse, thanks for coming up with this whole, uh, this whole plan for this video and uh, inviting us all to be a part of it. And thanks to you for watching this episode of What It Took. 
Now it's our turn, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>